thank you so much for joining me. What I want to do is to try to offer these opportunities every other, every other Thursday at 4 o'clock p.m. So what we're excited to do is to provide a chance to give you an update as to the construction, where we're at. You can, of course, type questions into the chat as well. If we can get to them at the end, we certainly will. And if not, we will have this recorded and be able to get back to you at some point with an answer. We can answer them either at the board meeting on Monday uh, or at the next one, which will be in two weeks. So we're looking for the next Zoom to be Thursday, April 7th at the same time, four o'clock. And of course, we'll have these recorded uh, if you wanna watch them at a later date. Uh, really excited to do this, to sort of provide opposite the board meetings times for uh, updates to happen and to give you some transparency into where we're at. I will tell you that overall, this entire uh, Zoom meeting today is very positive. Uh, that is good news across the board, both financial and from the update as well. So excited to share some consistent good news with you throughout this process. The first one I want to touch on is, and we've mentioned this a little bit, I think, at the past board meeting, President Biden signed into law a Consolidated Appropriations Act for 2022. And part of that act that he signed brought the FEMA reimbursement from 75% to 90%. Now, the best news about this act is that it's retroactive from January 2020 to December of 2021, which means this is less money that the Creskill community is going to have to put forth to restore the building. Now, the, core, the cost share that we were planning on refunding and to, to come up through with the referendum was 25%, 75% of the cost of the project coming from FEMA being reimbursed, and then the 25% that we would have to come up with. That now is reduced to 10%. The local cost share is down to 10% because of the 90% funding that's coming back we still get state aid on 34% of that 10%. Now we're still calculating this cost based on whatever we spend. Remember, we may not use the full 21 million. We have to overestimate the cost for obvious reasons, uh, but we are assuming, assuming that we use the entire 21 million, which is an over assumption at this point, we had estimated the cost per household in Creskill to be $83 per year on an average house assessed here in Creskill. That is now dropped to 34%, $34 rather per year. So if we use the entire 21 million, we had estimated that to be $83 per average a house assessed in Cresco. That is now $34 for the year if we ended up using the full 21 million. So that was a huge help to us that President Biden signed that law for the Consolidated Appropriations Act moving forward. Now what I'd like to do is to give you an update here uh, of the construction and where we're at so far. I'll start with the HVAC equipment cleaning. So the HVAC equipment that we still have in the building that we are not gonna replace, that's currently being cleaned and we anticipate complete cleaning by the end of this week. Now, what goes into that cleaning? Well, the fin tube, the fin tube is where the radiant heat connects from room to room. And all of the duct work in the building needs to be cleaned. The reason is we can't connect new equipment to the fin tubes and the duct work that's there if it's dirty. Dirty water passed over that area. And if we put the univents in and we turn the system on, with duct work that has not been cleaned and tested to be completely cleaned, the heat is gonna activate the dirty particles that sit on the fin tube, that sit in the duct work and release that into the air, obviously causing you know, stuff that we don't want our students, our staff to be inhaling. We've taken every precaution to clean the system. Not only do we clean it, we then test the air. If we need to reclean it, we do that again, all before opening. So we're not replacing, of course, all the fin tubes and the ductwork, but those are the central parts that need to be cleaned to a testing level in order that when we connect the new materials, they end up conducting clean air throughout the building. So those are almost done being cleaned, then they will be tested, they need to be recleaned. we will do that, and then we will proceed. Now for the HVAC equipment. The HVAC equipment is the items, the large scale items that we need to purchase, that we needed to really pass the referendum to do. 
The boilers are critical and they're the first item and we anticipate the boilers being delivered and installed in May in May of this year. So that's prior to the summer. The boilers have been ordered. They're moving forward quickly. We're getting updates. There is no delay, it seems like, with those. And we anticipate the boilers, which are the critical central part, to be installed, in, completed, and installed in May. Now, the univents. The univents are the classroom individual units. We have 52 of those. And they're going to be begin arriving and being installed in June, and that will continue for the rest of the summer. And remember, in our conversations, we talked about the boilers and we talked about the univents. The univents are in each classroom, and those are the ones that we anticipated some lead time on. And we anticipate that they will be arriving in about 10 to 14 weeks, and we will install them gradually. We are not going to wait for all the univents to arrive to install them because we wanna continue moving, moving forward. If we feel that we can get several of them in and we feel that we can continue to open a part of the building, that's what we wanna do. We don't wanna wait until they all arrive and install all or nothing. We are operating under the premise that we're gonna to continue to open this building in September by one way or another. The other part of the Univent, the Univent itself is this large rectangular box that you may have seen on the Restore Crestkill site. We put out two videos in the last 24 hours on that Restore, Restore Crestkill, Kill, Crestkill School site. And there are two videos there that sort of show you the ins and outs of what's going on in the room. In that Univent, there are two parts. The one part is the Univent. The other half is the energy recovery unit. The energy recovery unit of the Univents, it's a 10 foot long univent, and this is the other half. And what that does is that pulls the fresh air in from outside. We have to have a certain amount of fresh air coming in from the outside in order to have students in the building per law. That was even prior to COVID, and now those restrictions are even increased more with COVID to have fresh air circulation. So those have the longest lead time. Those would be the energy recovery units, half of the univent. And the reason they have the longest lead time is because it takes about 22 to 24 weeks because they are custom designed. They are built specifically for the Crestkill Univents. So beginning on June 15th, that is the date that we've been told, we're gonna to be getting basically one per day. So we anticipate having 20 of them here between June 15th and July 15th. And we also end up getting most of them here through July and the balance by August 12th. The latest date there is August 12th. Now we don't need all 52 of those to have energy recovery units. About 40 of the 52 require that energy recovery unit and the rest do not. There are some in our science wing uh, where we actually have horizontal units. So we don't actually need those because they've been safe. The science classrooms don't need them. We anticipate getting the complete amount of energy recovery units by August 12th and finishing installation by the end. So we're going to start getting these on June 15th, roughly one per day, and we have to receive approximately 40 of these energy recovery units to complete the entire school. The brains of the Univent is the thermostat controls. Those were ordered and the anticipated delivery date is in May and that's gonna coincide with the boilers. So we should be ready to go by mid-June. So what you're seeing is the boilers, the thermostat controls are all coming early. The part that really takes the longest is the energy recovery unit, which is half of the unit event and brings in fresh air from the outside. However, we are scheduled to get those starting in June. And as they come in, they will be put into each of the rooms. We also have to replace every single door, which was warped by a foot and a half of water. Those are ordered and those are being manufactured. Now those will be installed in July and the door frames for current codes and standards will be fixed as well. We're gonna reinstall and cut out the space. If you look on the video on the Restore Crestkill site, one of the videos I took when you step out is you see that near the door, there's an, a bottom door frame there that's cut out. That has to be replaced. Right now, we've been assured they will arrive by July. But if there is a delay for some item such as that, which is small, we feel that there is a backup plan that we can use using our current doors to a certain extent with some modifications. So as I've said to you many times, we're not going to be able to get boilers, unit vents, the energy recovery units, and be held up with doors. Uh, so we do have a backup plan working on that as well, although we have no reason to believe 
that those cannot be installed and ready to go in July. That's the date that we'd be given. Next thing, lockers, sheetrock, and paint. That is really the, the easiest part of this. Those are not items that we typically need excessive delays because they're small ticket items. So we received final drawings from the architect and final quotes for the lockers, the sheetrock, and the paint. And those are expected next week. So certainly plenty of time for that. But as we've talked about, having those major items, those major unit events, boilers, energy recovery unit, and the cleaning of the fin tubes, that had to come first, and it has. Uh, floor removal and the abatement, that's currently in progress. The estimated length for this job is about seven weeks. We have completion for the floor removal and abatement for the end of April. Every floor in the building in the classroom does need to be replaced because the glue beneath those tiles was getting loose and is impacted by the flooding in the water and the tiles are, are starting to pop. So even in a situation where you're only having a couple tiles in the classrooms popping, the floor needs to be replaced. Certain floors have tile that can be removed. Now it's not friable, uh, which means not airborne, but we've already started that and we're moving forward with the floor removal as well. Flooring reinstallation would then begin about two weeks prior to the floor removal. So once the floor removal has been completed, the majority of it, we back that up with the floor installation. And we will start in rooms where the flooring has been completely removed starting around April 18th. So a lot of work is already being done and can be started prior to May, which is really the key because we want to be back in September. And so far, everything has been fine. Uh, we're working on the weight room flooring. The material ship date is May 24th for that. Uh, we're looking at possible relocations for the weight room for our spring athletes as well, possibly having someone donate a temporary floor. Maybe we can move the weight room into the auxiliary gym, something that our students can certainly use. But the weight room flooring has to be replaced because of the specialty of the weights and the items that are in there. Furniture, complete furniture has been ordered. We're talking desks, chairs, file cabinets, bookcases. Um, that will be completed and the installation and arrival time is early July and the installation will start right away. So again, so far, furniture has been ordered. We've moved forward with that, and that is definitely right on pace for September. Uh, the science art rooms have certain built-in furniture. The delivery date for that is a little bit later because they're built-in. That's May 9th, and that's going to start in phases with the installation start as soon as we get delivery. Uh, built-in lab tables, art rooms, workstations, those are scheduled for May 9th delivery. And again, that comes in phases. So like I said, overarching here, Everything is very positive and the work has been ordered. All of the dates that we have been given has been well before September. We have really emphasized to both Epic as well as our individual vendors that we want this school open and complete in September. Of course, besides the media center and the auditorium, um, but everything is well on pace and the work has been continuing and we're not waiting. I, I wanna stress that in order to get the students back in September, we are not in a situation where we're gonna get 30 of the 52 unit events and let them sit. Uh, we're not in a situation where we're going to wait for all of the floors to be completely removed and then start the installation. We've explained to all of the workers that all the work that needs to be done needs to occur as much as possible at the same time with what's going on. So if we clear 15 classrooms with floors, we can bring the other company into those rooms and start putting the floors back in. And really, I'm pleased overall uh, with the progress. So certainly the first part that we were excited about was the 90%. Uh, I think that was critical and very, very excited that we were able to get that because that lowers the amount that goes out to the community. Everyone here in the Cresco community has been incredibly generous and it's amazing. Uh, but the fact that we estimated $83 per year and now it's down to roughly 34 at a maximum per year, I think is huge. Um, but it took a leap of faith and trust from everyone here in the community to actually rally and pass that referendum and I'm glad President Biden did the right thing. I, you may have seen the, um, the NPR piece that was on the radio, uh, was also placed on the NPR website. And what you heard from that, I think is important, is that there seems to be a problem across our country. And one of the states that was cited was West Virginia with the flooding issues. And these flooding issues have come forward and many schools have not been able to be open for about two years. Uh, so we are moving forward. We are fortunate to have all the support of the community. Some people have reached out with connections and things that we can use if we get stuck. And so far, we've had complete focus on the project. So the 90% was great. 
And the fact that we've continued to move forward with all the construction work simultaneously with everything going on has also been secure. Uh, so that is the update so far. Uh, like I said, boilers ordered, unit events for the individual classrooms. The key is the energy recovery unit. The energy recovery unit is the one half of the unit event. The unit event is the entire rectangular box. The energy recovery unit is the half that conducts the fresh air from outside. That was also the half that had the water come in, which was critical. The flood guards have been ordered in order to prevent this from happening again. If we see a situation like this happen again, God forbid, we will be able to close that off to make sure the water doesn't get in. Uh, science classrooms, brains of the universe, the doors have all been ordered as well. Lockers, sheetrock, and paint, which is still well on pace, but we saved that to the end, of course, because that's a small ticket item. That will be ordered by the end of the week. And the flooring removal is currently in progress to replace those floors. And as those floors get replaced, to have a new floor go back in right on top of it. Um, furniture, bookcases, desk chairs, file cabinets, all of that have been ordered. And the science art rooms, which have some specific built-ins, should be ready to go as well. Um, okay, let me answer some questions. Please feel free to put them in the chat and I will get you the answers. Uh, nail down mitigation measures. Do we have plans to prevent this in the future from FEMA? FEMA's large scale mitigation measures are still being discussed with them. My focus is acute. My focus is next year immediately preventing this from happening, which is why the flood guards are really the best option. We cover those flood guards. Water is not gonna be able to get to the building. Uh, FEMA has continued to talk with the Army Corps of Engineers. The Army Corps of Engineers has to come back out again and continue to take samples and to look at the area as they're working on their project. But FEMA is working with the Army Corps of Engineers, looking at a substantial adjustment to the entire terrain of the area. A lot of people have talked about Demarest. That is included in that. But our focus here has been to move forward with preventing it from happening to our building immediately in the short term, which is what we've done. Uh, boilers. The boilers, if you'll look, it's a good question about the boilers. The boilers, if you look on the Crestgill, Restore Crestgill School site, there are two YouTube videos that are on the top of that site. One of them at the very end, it shows you that we are going to be removing the boilers from the pit. If you remember the video, the boilers, ever since the creation of the school, were placed inside this sunken pit inside which is part of the problem because that filled up with a pool of water. The recommendations that we received when we were looking with architects is to take our boilers and place them up on ground level outside of the pit, which is what we're going to be doing. So when they're being placed in there, they will not be placed in the pit anymore. They will be placed on the top uh, at, in the front and then we'll have a flood guard on the outside of the boiler room because that to us is really our Fort Knox. That is the area that is most important. Uh, inspections from the town, county, and state department been inspecting these repairs to make sure that we are on track to receive the proper COs. Yes, they said it's too early for us to have them in. Uh, it's too early for us to have them in for inspection, but we keep submitting our plans to them as we go through it, and they've approved every step that we've made so far. Uh, so what we'll do is as soon as we have something in, uh, we make sure that they come in, they approve it, and we continue to work forward. So they said that Really, there's no reason for them to start inspection in the building until the end of this school year. Uh, so this will end up being sometime in June when they will start doing inspections. Um, but they said, uh, talking to the county and the state, that everything you have planned certainly seems fine from our end. Uh, and if there's any delay, let us know. Uh, but they will be coming in and we will not be waiting till August for that to happen, that's for sure. Uh, Dawn, question here about the additional uh, unit event that was ordered and included in the budget. Uh, that's been taken care of, I believe, right, Dawn, the, uh, the additional unit event? Yep. Absolutely. Uh, as it wasn't included in the original proposal, it was a change order at the last board meeting, but this is why we have contingency accounts. So we're nowhere near over budget at this point, and it's uh, fully covered by our contingency. A uh, question about the calendar of repairs. Yes, that's on the Restore Crestkill Schools site. That if you go to Restore Crestkill Schools and you hit the home button, the uh, timeline of repairs are there. And what you see next to the timeline is also a spreadsheet that shows what was budgeted and what we've spent so far. That's on the front page of that site as well. A uh, question here about plan B if this gets delayed for any reason. Yes, we're still working on that. Uh, I've been, we've been really stretching our minds to try to come up with 
a way to bring the middle school kids back to Cresco, and we're still working on that. Um, we looked at the recreation center for a while to use that. Unfortunately, the recreation center is just not big enough for our students. Uh, there are a couple classrooms, there is a gymnasium there, but then there's a couple back rooms when you walk in the recreation center by the dance area, and there's a small meeting room, which just isn't big enough for our students. Uh, so we are looking at another option and another backup plan to make sure that we have a way to have our students here in Creskill. I think uh, Chode has been a nice start for us. It's been a nice stopgap, uh, but I do not want to have 950 students going to Chode in September. So we are trying to be creative as we can using our resources, particularly St. Therese, et cetera, in that. Um, but we're continuing to move forward. Uh, will St. Therese be in use in September? Um, in case the school is ready yet, yeah, we're, we're going to move forward. The board is going to discuss with St. Therese extending that. We need St. Therese next year. Uh, let's say the school opens. Let's say everything works ideal and we're all thrilled to be back in the building. The media center and the auditorium are still not going to be ready in September. So we are going to still need St. Therese for a variety of reasons. So if we need St. Therese for instruction, we will have it. If we need St. Therese to just use uh, certain parts of it for media center and auditorium and musicals and concerts, then we will do that as well. Uh, Dawn, question about the uh, FEMA reimbursement for the bus costs. So FEMA reimbursing us for the cost of the busing, please. Uh, we've submitted our application. We uh, believe it's going to be denied because it says specifically in FEMA guidance, they do not reimburse for busing. Our intent right now is upon the denial, we're going to appeal it immediately um, and we will appeal it and see what happens. But we've, we've put the application in and we're waiting right now on FEMA's uh, response. Uh, other questions? I would say overall to everyone that, you know, we, we've all been very skeptical, at least I have to let you know uh, through this process, through the ups and downs. And I, I think you can hear on the NPR article some hello, of the hello. that are shared um, across different platforms. But I would say overall, this is as positive as we could have had an update so far. Uh, no anticipated delays and everything moving, moving forward well. Uh, why not start working on the media center and the auditorium now? Dawn, you have more specifics on that, but the media and the auditorium are massive projects that require a lot of extra materials and things to be brought in. And we really had to prioritize when we talked to Epic on what we wanted back. And of course, my priority is the classroom spaces, right? Dawn, you can go ahead and jump in a little bit if you want. Sure. We, um... For the majority of the work we've had done in the classrooms, we've used cooperative pricing or state contracts that already existed. For these two much larger spaces, our intent was to go out to bid. So to go out to bid, it's, it's a much more lengthy uh, project requiring architectural drawings and, and bid specs to be prepared. So our architects are right now in the process of doing that. They intend to have them done uh, by the end of the month. And then we will go out to bid for the for the two larger spaces to be repaired. And I think that ties into a lot of the questions that we had in the community at the beginning of this project is that we have certain resources as a public school that work for us that can provide work quicker than can happen sometimes in private. However, there's a cost that goes with that as well. Uh, certain other work though, as you have all learned, ends up having to go through a bidding process. And that bidding process makes things very delayed. And I mentioned that when we had a visit uh, from one of the union workers to, uh, to our original project asking us to go out to bid, when in fact we actually used a national co-op. And the reason we did that is because this is an emergency situation and we needed to have Train, which is the company that actually made the Univents when they were put in, they already have the specs, they already have the details. And so we had to call the Department of Consumer Affairs and get approval as an emergency purchase. And that's what we did. So there are certain times that using public co-ops can work for you as a school district because you can get work done quicker, but other times when it can work against you because you have to go out to bid depending on the situation. So we had to make a priority. And the priority, of course, is the classrooms. Not that I don't want the auditorium media centers completed. I certainly do. But if given, if we have to make a list, we have to start with the classrooms. 
because getting those 52 classrooms open is critical to having our entire six to 12 student body back here in September. And I realize some of you may have questions that may come up at a later time. That's completely fine. Feel free to submit them. We can get you the answers for Monday's board meeting as well, uh, or for our next meeting. Um, and hopefully we can continue the, the positivity, which is what we have right now. Uh, we have very strong positivity towards moving forward, um, coming back in September. Uh, okay, uh, we'll say goodbye now. If there's any other questions, feel free to send them forward. We can try to get you the answers as soon as possible. Uh, we will have this recorded. This will be placed on the Restore Cresco site. We're recording it now. Uh, and let's continue the good karma. Let's continue the good news. Uh, things are, are full steam ahead for September and we feel very confident, but we're not gonna stop. And we're gonna keep moving forward. So hopefully I will see you again, either Monday at the board meeting or, or the following Thursday as well with more continued good news.